So hey guys, for timing wise, just so you know, the video that you saw yesterday, I finished filming physically less than 45 minutes ago, so I'm literally just cutting back in, but that video was too long anyway, we were already to 15 minutes, and I had literally gone inside to start editing the video while Wayne had started tearing down some stuff. Ironically, we have some interesting updates here, literally just less than an hour after I ended my last video, and Wayne's gonna tell you what's going on. All right, so Wayne, you started tearing in here so you can get access to the fuel pump. Uh, tell me what's going on here. Well, once I got the, everything up and out of the way, I found the wire that goes to the fuel pump. It's broke, and right next to that wire, was the other end of it. Oh wow. So the wire had broke. So we're going to splice the uh, wire back together and then put it back together and try it and see if it works. Okay. So now we're thinking we don't even need the new fuel pump. There may have just been an electrical problem that you diagnosed. Yep. All right. I appreciate it, man. Yep. So uh, Wayne fixed up the electrical connections in there and uh, put everything back together in there. So uh, I mean, there's no new fuel pump or filter in there. That's uh, just the wiring labor that he fixed, that he found after pulling this stuff out to find it. And now if we try to prime it, hear that click? That's the fuel pump getting power and telling us right away by the red light that, hey, we're primed. And uh, hey, Eric, we want to run for you. So... Wayne fixed the generator. It was an electrical problem the entire time. Um, it really is just kind of a choice at this point. It's like, well, should we still wait till tomorrow and put in a new fuel filter and pump and stuff? But it's running fine now. So now that he's kind of shown me how to get at the fuel pump in case that happens again. Again, that's the other funny part is if I'd taken this to an own and shop, I would have had to book it out three weeks in advance and have them die. They wouldn't diagnose it, of course. They would just tell me that, that the fuel pump isn't performing and that we need to replace it. And, I mean, let's be honest. They probably wouldn't have told me like Wayne did when he found the electrical wire problem instead of the actual fuel pump. They would have just charged me for the fuel pump and made it work and said, hey, we fixed it. You know, I mean, come on. It, 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 that's, that's the truth about... Uh, big shops and stuff and that's why I was really confident and happy to bring it to Wayne to have it looked at so you know at this point to save a day and to save a little bit of money and put money in the gas tank instead I'm actually not going to replace not going to wait till tomorrow to replace the actual fuel pump on the generator if it goes bad again yeah I'll probably be able to do it myself on the road but I mean he pretty much showed us that once you start breaking into it you you'll be able to find uh, you'll be able to diagnose it a little better and he rewired it the actual This is what the wiring looked like in there all corroded turquoise and green and stuff. So um, And you got to think the generator is really vibrating a lot Especially if you're running it for more than just 10 minutes at a time for an air conditioning All that vibration is, is gonna cause damage like this or maybe make wires come out or something like that so that's why it's good to get a really good look at it rather than just say, what did I say the other day? I said, uh, I'm just going to rip it out, throw it in the dumpster and get a four stroke. So, I mean, it just goes to show you that if you, if you just think about it and take a step back and say, well, hey, let's, let's think this through. The next step is just going to be to have Wayne remove the drum that he just replaced, bring it into O'Reilly's and have them turn it so that it's, so that we know it's like scientifically perfect and ready for the rear shoes and then I'll be back on the road so ended up being a really good day here in Florida this is something you don't see often Eric's in the wrong side <laughs> Jax is actually quite happy about it he's like cool man I get an extra hand to hold yeah well I get attention now yeah that works so we're taking a little test drive here so Wayne can see what the uh, vibration is going on what are your thoughts so far I can tell it's that back back drum. It's not in the steering wheel because if it was in the front, it would vibrate in the steering wheel. And everything I feel is like coming from this back side with the new rotor we just put on. So word to the wise, if you have a dually van, Ford or Chevy, and you're getting new drums put on, even though the guy's gonna look at you crazy when he takes it out of the box on the counter, 
tell them you want to get it turned right out the box. That's crazy. You'll be able to see that vibration in the I, camera. I try to be. It never seems to show up. I mean, you can kind of see it, but you can't. You can't feel what we're feeling. Uh, anything brand new at the box, you would. But that's just shoddy. Just a crappy part. Hate to say it. But hey, turning it does help. I can confirm that, so. Hey, you know, the evenings are actually kind of nice. It still gets down to like 78 degrees. <laughs> Cooling off. And I'm just gonna hang out here. I'm gonna park outside Wayne's house until tomorrow. We already talked to the landlord, he knows me. Obviously I rented from here last month and uh, said it's okay if I spend a night here. Reason being is Wayne and I are just not comfortable with jacking up the RV, taking the drum off, and then me moving around and living in the RV overnight. So we'll get a fresh start tomorrow uh, with the drum. And after that, well, should be uh, back on the road. I know we're not past Thanksgiving yet, but I, you have no idea how much I'm itching to remove this and put my Christmas one in. But I will resist a tiny bit longer. Good morning, y'alls and y'alls and other y'alls behind y'alls and, and y'alls. Beautiful day here in Florida. That's right. Waiting for my appointment with Wayne. He's got a bunch of other projects going on. No biggie. We'll get to it today. I thought I would share a very important recall that, that is going to be, that's going to affect a lot of RVers here, and that's for fire extinguishers. And this was some information that was shared to me uh, by a couple people sending me some voicemails and text messages and after doing my own research I thought that I could help them by sharing it with more of my viewers because if you're in an RV you probably have a fire extinguisher that's been recalled. So the recall is massive and it actually affects over 37 million of these here in the United States and in other countries. The brand is KID, K-I-D-D-E, and basically the easiest way to describe it is if you have a plastic handle fire extinguisher, if this is made of plastic, you're, it's definitely one of the ones that's been recalled. The problems are when you go to use them, they don't do anything, they have a problem. Not sure if it has to do with movement, but pretty much these thin ones with the plastic handle because they're so light, they're really been popular with RVs and dating back to 1985 and as late as 2015. So a very, a very, massive group of fire extinguishers actually and you can go on their website kidde.com i believe it is and they got a full list of all the models even some of the white fire extinguishers even metal handle ones but every single one with a plastic handle so guys please go check your rv travel trailer or house and make sure that you don't have one of these that's been recalled that might not even work when you need it to work you know, it's one of those things where that false sense of security, you, know, you think that you have one. I have two other fire extinguishers. I have the fire extinguishers in a can, one up here by the driver's seat and one by the back bedroom back there. So this wasn't my only fire extinguisher, but man, had it not been for several of my viewers notifying me of that, I wouldn't have known. I may have reached for that, hoping it was gonna put out a fire in an emergency and who knows, it may or may not have worked. So. Uh, the other thing about it though is, I'm just going to point this out, I've been trying to contact KID, KIDA, I don't know how you pronounce it, but all they really say on the recall is contact us for more information. Now if you're talking about 37 million people that are all trying to get information, I can't get through. I've never gotten through on the phone the last 48 hours. I've sent them emails, I've sent customer, um, what do you call them, fill out the form with a customer complaint, gave them the model number and everything. I don't know what to tell you as far as what to do. <laughs> um, so I am probably just going to finally just throw it in the dumpster and go buy a different brand because they have really, really bad, terrible customer service right now. I understand they're getting swamped. Like pretty much every fire extinguisher they've ever made has been recalled. And I think they're supposed to replace it, but until I physically hear back from the company, which is probably going to go bankrupt and just not reply, I don't know. But otherwise I would stay just go to Walmart, Home Depot, and buy a different brand than that for now, probably, or buy the ones in a can. Since we're on the page with uh, fire safety and fire extinguishers, it's a great time just to remind people in an RV, especially if you're full timing, about replacing the batteries in all of your smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors and propane detectors and all that stuff. I do it once a month, which probably seems ridiculous, but 
no matter what, once a month I'm gonna go to my carbon monoxide detector here and I'm gonna replace the batteries whether I need to or not, just to make sure that I don't ever have to worry about them going dead, once a month. The carbon monoxide detector is two double A's and my smoke detector right here is a nine volt battery, same thing, once a month. However, I am lucky because my propane leak detector down here from the factory is actually uh, hardwired right into the DC batteries. So I'd never really have to worry about that unless I have a battery problem. All right, well, I didn't quite make it till after Thanksgiving this year. Yeah, you knew it was coming. Got my Christmas wreath on the front. I just want to add a red bow probably like, like last year in the middle there. It'll cover up the Chevy emblem there. I got my battery operated Christmas lights on there and uh, I'll show you how I put it on there. This is how I do it every year. I just got a big zip tie up here in the front going through the metal part of the wreath and then I got one more uh, down there holding it to the bottom. I've got my battery operated LED Christmas lights strung around three times in a circle here and yeah these are LED really efficient ones that run off batteries. So the cord comes up here I've attached it to a cord here so that this swivels. This is a waterproof case here that holds three AA batteries. Also, it has a timer, so if you turn it on at night, like at 5 p.m., it'll automatically turn off six hours later at 11 p.m. and not drain the batteries into the night or the early morning. And I get about five days for AA's, which might not seem that great, but it's worth it. You can't really see how bright they are right now in the daytime, but believe me, wherever I park, it looks pretty darn cool. Hey Wayne, deja vu? Yeah, deja vu. <laughs> it's all coming back. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So like I said, Wayne's going to pull off this brand new drum, four days old, and we'll go take it to O'Reilly's and have it turned. Make sure it's 100% good, perfect, scientifically, ready to go for shoes. All right. How does this new drum look? Well, you can looks tell. Well, actually... <laughs> Yeah, you can I don't see. know if it's showing up on the camera, but like in here, spot here, here, there's just like three spots that the it's hitting. It's not even touching in the middle. So there you go, guys. Get your brand new drums turned before you install them. You heard it from me, then Wayne. Hey guys, so we are back here. Today has been kind of a weird day, not the way I envisioned it to work out, but I think we're okay now. Uh, just so you know, O'Reilly's, we dropped it off to have it, to have the drum turned, and uh, they were supposed to call us in an hour. Well, they didn't call us, so we just stopped back in at the end of the day, and he said, oh, I, I meant to tell you, we, it doesn't fit in our machine, and we, we didn't turn it, we couldn't, here you, here you go. I'm like... I wasn't too happy about it, like initially, but you know, <laughs> that's just been the runaround with the O'Reilly's and Les Schwab. Actually, I shouldn't be surprised at that. Uh, what we ended up doing, since we can't find anybody that can turn a drum this big, is Wayne made some calls and then we went into AutoZone and actually found a different looking drum. Like, there's enough better about it, not to mention the weight. So, I eh, just bought it out of pocket. We've got the new uh, Auto Zone drum here. This is the O'Reilly's one that has failed on me five or six times now. We're going to notice some really big differences. Now, first of all, you can see they didn't even machine the O'Reilly's one all the way through. Uh, they only machined what they thought they had to. Whereas over here, the entire drum was machined. And looking at the part that's most important where the shoes are hitting, look at the thickness that they left right there compared to the thickness left. This has not been machined yet. They, they were going to, but they didn't. This is what you start with, with the O'Reilly's brand versus AutoZone. So, and, that, and there's actually a lot of other differences. If we look on this side again, O'Reilly's, AutoZone here, much thinner cooling fins here compared to here. That'll make a difference with the heat as well. Overall, what, I, what is, can be gathered from this is that we might not need to turn the new AutoZone one. It is a much better product. Uh, it's better made. It's quite a bit heavier. Um, so yeah. About 15 pounds heavier. Yeah, yeah, 15 pounds, Wayne says. So uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get my money back for this one or not. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to try to do. Might still try it, but for the price, technically this one came out to what, 80? 80, 80, it's 86 out the door. So. 
and I paid 240 for these through Les Schwab or out the door, I think it's 89. So technically this is cheaper. All I would say is don't buy your drums from O'Reilly's. Buy them from AutoZone. I mean, it, clearly that's, that's a huge difference. And I say that strictly because of the business practice of O'Reilly's or the warranty, you might call it. Whereas an employee directly told me, we only have this one product. We don't care. We don't care if you're back here every second day for the rest of the year, for the year that your warranty lasts. We don't care. We'll just swap it for the same exact thing. We don't care. It's like, that's why the warranty it's useless at O'Reilly's, right? Because, I mean, I'm not going to live my life that way and be back in the shop and spend every other day taking apart the drum and then spend the other day buying a new drum. It's just no way to live or travel. So we'll try AutoZone. On the plus side, although it's really bright over here still, look how cool this looks at night. Yeah, it definitely needs a red bow up there, but I like it. Wow. <laughs> that makes me smile, actually. I'm going to say goodbye and goodnight to y'all because I want to edit this video and try to get it uploaded. Uh, my goal here is to leave tomorrow morning from Panama City and tomorrow get back to doing what I'm supposed to be doing, what I want to do. So um, I assume everything is going to be okay. Really there would be no reason in even making a video or adding tomorrow's drive because it never happens the first day. It takes. 48 hours for the problem to come back in the past from the O'Reilly's part. So um, I will definitely give you an update in my very next video. And I'm hoping to be back to my normal self, Jackson and I on the road. So uh, again, really appreciate Wayne's help. RV Prepper Wayne on YouTube. I'll put a link to his uh, YouTube channel in the video description below. And here's to the future, guys. Thanks for following me. Let's have some fun.